Thank you. Yes, um, have you ever asked yourselves why are US cities shaped so oddly? In fact, I did this a couple of times in the recent month and thanks to Kitty, I came across an answer or let's say a new perspective to this question. And it started with another question. What do shoestrings have to do with it? Let me explain. At first, what do I mean by oddly shaped? From the perspective of a European, North American cities often look like this or like this. And of course, their boundaries are rarely in line with areas of urban density. In contrast to Central European cities, quite appealing to the eye when it comes to clarity and order. You can understand easily where the actual city is and where not. Of course, cities always depend on topography, inhabitants, and above all, politics when it comes to their shapes. But there are specific processes in the US that shape cities in extreme ways, so-called municipal annexations. A municipal annexation is a way of territorial extension for cities by joining area to an already existing city. The reason for that vary from increasing tax revenues or organization of better civil services to political influence. It's a highly controversial topic, especially when it comes to involuntary annexations. Laws about this procedure differ from state to state, but most of the time they have something in common. Frank Sandstock explains it as follows. To prevent the creation of a divided city, annexation statutes often have been drafted so that only contiguous or adjacent territory can be annexed. These terms have proven themselves a fruitful source of litigation. And indeed, the term contiguous has taken on strange features. The shoestrings annexations, for example. City officials came across the idea of annexing important areas whilst keeping them connected to the main part of the city only by small land connections and sometimes not even that. Let's take a look on a few examples. San Diego, for example, due to water shortage residents uh, of the 21 square miles area in the South Bay region voted for an annexation by the city of San Diego to make this possible without crossing the boundaries of two neighboring towns in between. A narrow strip of land through the bay was annexed too. And a quite familiar city for some of you, Santa Barbara, in the 1940s, the construction of an airport began at the coast close to Golita, and the airport became a lucrative source of revenue, later acclaimed by the city of Santa Barbara. Because the airport could, couldn't be connected by a corridor along the mountains, a strip right through the sea was chosen as a connection. In order not to infringe on existing mineral rights, only the ocean floor and the water above the ground were annexed. The legality is still disputed. Apart from them, more examples can be found all over the US. This is, of course, only one small perspective on the subject of urban forms, but a rather peculiar one. Thank you for your attention and maybe ask yourselves, why are European cities shaped so boring? <laughs>